Hi, I'm Angela Fair. I'm always looking for ways to make watercolor more exciting and here on my channel I share lessons to help you become your own favorite watercolor artist. Today we're going to be working with a product that just has me really excited. The product I'm talking about is Daniel Smith Watercolor Ground. This is black watercolor ground. Can you believe it? <laughs> black in watercolor. Let's get started painting. We'll do a supply inventory before we start. Uh, first of all, I have Daniel Smith Watercolor Ground. This is their Mars Black Watercolor Ground and I've coated it onto a wooden six, six inch wooden panel. So it is as you can see, dead black. Absolutely impossible to paint in watercolor, right? Wrong. We're going to do that today and it's going to be so much fun. In order to paint onto a black surface, you do need to plan ahead a little bit with your supplies. Uh, traditional transparent watercolors are not going to cut it here, so very few of the colors I have in my palette are going to work. The ones that are rated as semi-transparent, my cobalt teal, my Mars yellow, uh, my yellow ochre, uh, some of these are have enough opacity to them that they will show up on a black surface. Most of them will not. So I have some other things to make up for it. I have uh, my white gouache. Uh, gouache is opaque watercolor. And I have a number of iridescent and shimmery colors from Daniel Smith and Core. I have Core's ir iridescent pearl. I have uh, some duochrome, a duochrome cactus flower from Daniel Smith, iridescent antique gold, lapis lazuli genuine, this is a Primatech color, uh, which is a ground mineral uh, based color, so we're going to use that. The red fuchsite as well is the same Primatech, so they have uh, the actual minerals and a little bit of shimmer and opacity to those. I have iridescent electric blue, and then burnt bronzite genuine. We're going to use all of those. I also have Schmincke's Aqua Bronzes. These are a metallic powder that you can mix with water. So we're going to try some of these out. We're going to just see where it goes. I have no idea what to expect. This is my first time painting on black watercolor ground, uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what surprises emerge as we paint today. I'm going to prep by getting some of these paints squeezed out into my a uh, little sushi plate here. Really handy for working uh, as a little palette. We're just going to put a little dab of each of these. And then if I don't use them up in this painting, these are, will be my new favorite colors for the foreseeable future as I, as I use them up. And we'll see what works and what I enjoy using. I might not end up using all of these colors. We'll just kind of see where it goes. Watercolor ground doesn't need any prep. I've just brushed it on here and it has a few brush marks in here which is going to add to the texture. Something else we don't get a lot of in watercolor. We're just going to start with our gouache and give ourselves a little bit of a light value kind of play area in our painting. And of course the gouache is opaque so you can see how it uh, shows up nice and strongly on the paper. Let's just, there we go, looks like a bird doesn't it? Because I've used a damp brush to apply the gouache it goes on uh, opaque in some areas and semi-transparent in others. Liking that. I want to have a bit of a light area surface to compare the way the color goes down. So I'm, that's why I'm placing the gouache first. And then from there we can add some additional colors. And I like seeing that texture emerge. And this is going to be an abstract. Already we have a beautiful effect just in black and white um, that I'm liking. But we're going to go into the iridescent electric blue now. Remember too that the more dilute your colors are, the less they're going to show up on the painting. Um, let's just try a nice swish of iridescent blue. And add some water to let it flow a little bit. I don't want to change my working method because I'm working on on, bla on a black surface or on watercolor ground. I want to paint mostly the way I would if I were painting on paper. And watercolor ground can be applied to paper as well. It doesn't have to be on the panel the way I've chosen to do it. Okay, take a look at the shimmer that's happening here. It's hard to see a little bit because some of it's wet here, but as it dries that shimmer is not going to go away. It's exciting. It's 
grab some of the lapis lazuli and see if it has a similar effect. Lapis lazuli is a Primatech color. Feels a little bit gluey, um, just in the binder that they've had to use to make the lapis uh, suspended as a paint. And it's not nearly as dominant. So it just doesn't have, I think, the same shimmer as the iridescent uh, electric blue. So we're going to set that one aside. We'll ignore that color, save it for a future for another for a future lesson. But I'm going to pick up on my brush some of the pure iridescent pearl. This is a color made by Core, and it goes on almost like a silver wood onto my paper surface. And then if I dilute it, it's going to be more transparent. And just give an iridescent sheen. And it kind of is kind of dancing and sparkling right now. Here's the burnt bronzite, adding some warmth to our painting. The watercolor ground gives a different surface than you would get from a painting on watercolor canvas or Yupo or painting on traditional painting canvas. Um, the watercolor ground is more absorbent. So the brush strokes that I place, they soak in a little bit. Um, they do tend to take some of your crisper lines and bleed a little especially if you're working with a lot of water, which is what I like to do. The gouache is still damp there, so any moisture I place here mixes my color and gives it that kind of cloudy gouache-ness about it. Let's place some of that iridescent Aztec gold. So I did cheat a little bit in using gouache to cover some of the black, but you can see some of the colors are really holding their own really well. That iridescent blue, electric blue, is just amazing. It's a marvel. And the iridescent pearl gives a nice sheen that lightens the value. Diluted, you get a lighter value. I'm trying the red fuchsia site because I really like the sparkle that it has in the other paintings I've used it with. I'm just getting to know this color. And it's kind of a terracotta kind of red. A little bit pinker maybe than a terracotta. But it has a real shimmer to it that's a lot of fun to play with. I really feel like the gouache right in the center there is a little bit too bright and of course you're working with a black surface but unlike when you're painting on white watercolor and you can't get your lights back when you cover them up um, on a dark surface we certainly can so I can grab some uh, this is neutral tint and add some darks back into my painting And that'll just tone that white and actually create some strong contrast right in this area. Putting the black, that neutral tint, that black, beside the white really makes those two areas, that area, come into contrast. Okay, something we haven't done yet is worked with any of our aqua bronzes. Let's take some of the gold aqua bronze. It'll go really well with the iridescent antique gold. And I'm just going to dip a little bit onto my sushi plate here and it's just a dry powder I can mix it with some water to activate it or I can sprinkle it right on the painting I'm going to start with my brush and just trickle a little bit on here and when you're working with metallic 
metallics, they tend to want to always float up to the top. So even if you lay your color over top of them, uh, that usually that metallic just floats up, and never really disappears. Just a good thing to know. You want to make sure you put it somewhere carefully, but you also get to know then that it does kind of stick around. <laughs> you, you're not going to lose it just because you've put some more color down. Always when working with iridescent mediums, make sure you do a good job of cleaning up your palette and your brushes after because they do get everywhere. So I have a little aqua bronze on my fingertip. I love to place it um, and make some kind of big marks just using my finger to create a little bit of a broken shape. Oh, that's really beautiful. Working with metallics, it's really nice to have that darker surface to work with because that shimmer is just so beautiful as, as the painting uh, starts to dry. Having some black watercolor ground on hand can really open you up to some magical moments in watercolor. There's a ton of activity going on in this painting. Brilliant color, shimmery, beautiful moments, breath strokes that are just fun to look at. Uh, and it's all supported by that very rich, dark background. I just want to remind you that I share weekly watercolor lessons here on YouTube, and you can subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a broadcast. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this lesson. Is watercolor ground in black something that you would try yourself? Have you used iridescent and metallic mediums in your paintings? And Finally, I'd love to hear from you what you'd like to see in a future lesson. I love answering my watercolor students' questions here on YouTube in videos that can help you grow your watercolor skills and become your own favorite artist. Mm -hmm.